Pertussis, also known as whooping cough, is a highly contagious acute respiratory infection caused by the bacterium Bordetella pertussis. The disease is usually transmitted through airborne droplets and most commonly occurs in children. The classic clinical symptom of pertussis are coughing fits, these inspiratory whoops with coughing and maybe some vomiting after the cough. Let's look at the actual organism itself. Bordetella pertussis is a gram-negative cocobacillus. So they're a bit of a circle, but also a bit of a, a rectangle, cocobacillus. Which, really, these guys only have been found in humans. There are no known animal or other environmental reservoirs. It is important to note that other Bordetella species can cause respiratory illness as well with similar symptoms to pertussis. These are Bordetella para pertussis, Bordetella bronchi septica, and Bordetella holmesi. Bordetella pertussis, the bacteria, is transmitted through airborne droplets. Like when someone coughs and sneezes, someone could receive uh, this organism. Once Bordetella pertussis is inhaled, it travels to the ciliated epithelial cells in the nasopharynx and the upper respiratory tract. Here, the bacteria can anchor itself into the epithelial cells using its virulent factors, its uh, structures, including the filamentous hemagglutinin, pertactin, and agglutinin. Once Bordetella pertussis attaches, the bacteria multiply and release toxins, which is important in the pathophysiology of the disease. There are many toxins, including pertussis toxin, which disrupts the ciliated epithelial cell function. Pertussis toxin also makes the respiratory tract more sensitive to histamine, a chemical that causes swelling around the area, causing difficulty breathing, and this is where the classical whooping sound in a pertussis infection comes from. Tracheal cytotoxin paralyzes and kills cilia. These cilia are responsible normally for clearing debris from the respiratory tract. So mucus and other materials can become trapped in the airways and cause a cough reflex. Adenylate cyclase toxin interferes with phagocytosis, so it evades the human immune system. Dermonecrotic toxin causes local necrosis, cell death. Bordetella pertussis remain localized on the respiratory uh, tract, and they actually do not invade deeper into the tissue. They don't invade into the bloodstream normally. The symptoms that arises with Bordetella pertussis infection so first of all, Bordetella pertussis, once inhaled, it enters the respiratory tract and enters what's called the incubation period, which is for about one to three weeks. In this period, the person who is infected is asymptomatic and not infectious. Following the incubation period, there are three stages of the illness. The first phase is the catarrhal stage, which lasts about one to two weeks. In this stage, the infection is highly contagious and presents similarly to a upper respiratory tract infection or a flu. The second phase of the illness is a paroxysmal stage, which lasts up to six weeks. This is where the whooping cough occurs due to the swollen glottis. The whoop occurs during inspiration, which is like a high pitched intake of breath that sounds like a whoop and is characteristic of pertussis. Here is an example. <laughs> Coughing fits may be followed by vomiting, also known as post-tussive emesis. The person may be struggling for breath, have cyanosis and apneic episodes. The last stage is the convalescent stage, which can last up to two weeks or longer. 
This is where symptoms start to improve, but coughing attacks may persist. However, these stages are often less obvious in adolescents and adults compared to children and infants. Risk factors for Bordetella pertussis include anyone who's really unvaccinated, regardless of age, immunocompromised people, infants under the age of one, as well as teenagers, adults, and the elderly, especially if they're also in close contact with people who have actually pertussis. Complications of pertussis for infants and children include apnea, which is where breathing stops temporarily, pneumonia, also known as Bordetella pertussis pneumonia, seizures, encephalopathy, which is when the disease actually alters the brain function, hernias, when you cough so much this increases pressure and a hernia can form, weight loss, atelectasis, and rib fractures or strained chest wall muscles due to severe coughing. In adults who have pertussis, issues can include urinary incontinence, syncope or fainting, weight loss, as well as rib fractures and the chest wall muscle strain from severe coughing. There are many differential diagnoses for a child, for example, presenting with a cough, and this includes viral or bacterial respiratory infections, bronchitis or bronchiolitis, Cystic fibrosis, which is actually a very specific inherited disorder, as well as asthma. Now, pertussis is a clinical diagnosis. It's important to suspect it in any infant or child with a persistent cough, regardless of their vaccination status. It's important to suspect pertussis due to the high risk of complications and it should trigger immediate treatment, even before laboratory you know, diagnosis confirms anything. These laboratory investigations include a nasopharyngeal swab for bacterial growth and culture, which is considered gold standard. The swab or sputum sample, for example, can be sent for PCR to identify pertussis DNA. Fluorescent antibody technique can also be used to recognize pertussis uh, antigens. Pertussis serology in the blood is good to confirm the presence of IgG to pertussis toxin, but this is usually late stage in the condition. Pertussis is a notifiable disease in many countries, which means doctors, hospitals, and laboratories are required by law to inform the local public health unit about each new case that is diagnosed. The treatment for pertussis is antibiotics, and it's recommended for all patients of any age if they're diagnosed within three weeks of starting symptoms. Antibiotics are also recommended for those in close contact with people who, who are living with infected individuals because of the highly contagious nature of the condition. The antibiotics used include macrolides such as azithromycin or clarithromycin for a few days, or a combination of two antibiotics such as trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole. Given that pertussis is a very contagious condition, it is reportable, and infectious control, infection control may differ between each country, but in general, Patients are advised to avoid contact with others, especially other infants, young children, and pregnant women. And this is so until the person who is infected receives adequate treatment with antibiotics or coughing has occurred for over three weeks. Then usually they're not contagious anymore, I guess. In terms of prevention, routine immunization with uh, a vaccine called DT. AP, or diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis, uh, is important at scheduled ages. Otherwise, pregnant women and people in contact with newborns should also be vaccinated, if not done so. So in summary, pertussis 
is caused by a bacteria called Bordetella pertussis, and it's a highly contagious acute respiratory infection, usually affecting children. It's characterized by a whooping cough that can go on for weeks and is associated with some complications, and so immediate treatment is important, and to avoid further uh, spread of the bacteria.